It's New Year's Eve, but is it the best night of the year to be working? Where will I be at the strike of midnight? How am I going to deal with all of the road closures? And how much money will I make in extras? On the Westway, I get a Twitter notification saying that Euston Station is busy. Well, I'm thinking if Euston Station's busy, maybe some of the other stations will be busy. So I head to Paddington. Is there any free cabs here? Why would you leave? And yeah, super lucky that I get an on and off job here. As I join this rank where there's clearly no cabs, you'll notice there's a driver coming out with his light on. I mean, where are you gonna go to get a job quicker than just staying at the station? On and off, and we're going straight to Islington, Upper Street to be exact. You'll know that I love this route. We just get straight out onto the big roads, all the way through Marlborough Road, Euston Road, Euston Road Underpass, Euston Road, forward into Pentonville Road, and you get a left into Barron Street by the Castle Pub, right White Lion Street, left into Islington High Street, and we'll bear left into Upper Street. It's a doddle, nice easy job to get us started. Why food has sorted me out on this shift today? Because of the closures that are going on and because of the fact that New Year's this year is falling on a Saturday, I can't guarantee what's gonna be open and if I can even get there. Now, if you've been living under a rock, you may not know that Y Food are a complete meal replacement shake. They come in a huge range of flavors. They come in vegan options. They even come in bar form. I love this. It literally tastes like your favorite banana milkshake, but high amount of proteins, good amount of carbohydrates, meaning it's gonna keep you full and sustained. Perfect for me starting off my shift because I've just spent over an hour getting into town. I don't really feel like stopping, finding somewhere to go grab lunch. So having these with me is an absolute lifesaver. The other game changer from Y Food is their selection of bars. I do love a little cheeky chocolate bar every now and again. High amount of protein, which you will not get in most sugary chocolate bars. So these are great for a little pick me up, just something to keep you tired over throughout the day as well. I highly recommend giving Y Food a go. Just use my code taxi-youtube to get 10% off site-wide. So that works on the drinks, that works on the bars, whatever flavors you wanna go for, or just use my link in the description down below. So I head back into the center zone. Habitually at Islington High Street, I always go down St. John's Street and then just bear right into Rosebury Avenue. And luckily enough, I managed to pick up this gentleman, only a short job, just wants to go back up to Upper Street. Whilst completing this job, we actually have a bit of a conversation of how he uses cabs a lot and that a lot of drivers would probably turn down this job because it's deemed as too short. I've never quite understood this because this job came to £6.80 and then he put a £1.20 tip on it, rounding it up to £8. Therefore, a fiver of that job wasn't actually doing anything. It was only what, three pound of it was actually doing anything. The other thing I'm gonna to do today is explain about the meter today on New Year's Eve. So it's not a bank holiday, but it is a Saturday. So it means I'm running at rate two all day, which is awesome. After 8 p.m. on New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, and some other days of the year, like Boxing Day, we are able to charge extras. These get applied to our meter in the form of four pound extra per journey. So let's say I stay out till two in the morning. If I manage to say do 10 jobs, I get an extra 40 pounds just for doing my job. Isn't that fantastic? So you're getting three pound 80 starting fare plus four pound because it's New Year's Eve after eight o'clock, meaning that I'm getting seven pound 80 just for starting the meter. I mean, Uber do this all year round anyway, it's called surge pricing. We get like two days of the year we can do this. So it's just a little bit of a bonus, an incentive if you will, for coming out on New Year's Eve when there's not gonna be a lot of drivers on the street, when TfL or a licensing authority know they need to incentivize drivers to come out. I have to go a lot further before I get onto my next job and that's here at High Hoban, right by the Hoxton Hotel, Hoban Town Hall. And this family wants to go to Harrods. This is my first kind of job into the central zone. But luckily, before coming into town, I had a good look at the map of road closures. I mean, it's very nice for Westminster to make something like this rather than leave us in the dark. Well, this is a note to my future self. Good luck, because it doesn't look good. Now, luckily at this time of day, 20 past three, none of the closures will affect my route but it's great to kind of gauge what the traffic levels might be like on this journey.
Naturally, in December, this time of year, it's quite busy on the lead up to Harrods. So they just want to be dropped off bit short because they don't want to sit and wait in the traffic. I have a good look round, make sure I'm not blocking any taxis that might want to get onto the Harrods front door and you can see it's pretty sparse and cleared out. So I jump straight on and I get a couple of lads who just want to go to a boutique shop on the corner of Walton Street and Draycott Avenue. My options are just to buzz it all the way down Brompton Road and then bear left and then come in left at Walton Street. So I opt for Ovington Gardens and Ovington Square because once you get in at this point, there is no more traffic lights to contend with. Right Walton Street, a little bit congested here at Walton Street, but I managed to pull up and set down on the left. Before I go back to that Harrods kind of area, this is a great time to try out one of the Y food bars. This is the uh, coconut and white chocolate flavor. I mean, look at it, you get a real decent sized bar, but man, they are so filling because of the amount of protein in them. Quite a substantial bar. Just nice for a, a guilt-free pick-me-up in the cab. I don't have to go too far on Brompton Road before I get this gentleman jump in, and he wants to go to the junction of Pembroke Villas and Pembroke Road. Now, Pembroke Road is a one-way road eastbound. So, getting there, there's a few different ways that we can set this. I could just buzz it all the way down Cromwell Road, do a right at the big Tesco's, which gets you onto Warwick Road, then right Pembroke Road set down the left. The issue with this is you've got a major road like Cromwell Road so the traffic could be busy getting out of town. Also multiple sets of traffic lights. We're kind of going past the point to come back on ourselves. What I up for is if I do a right into Marlowe's Road, left Lexham Gardens and we go forward over into Logan Place. We go past Freddie Mercury's old house on the left hand side, right Cromwell Crescent, right Pembroke Road and we just set him down on the left here. As it's still kind of mid-afternoon, I'm thinking if I go down Kensington High Street, I might be able to pick up someone who's perhaps come out of a shop. But I trundle all the way along, eventually getting ourselves into Queensgate and Prince Consort Road. Now, check out this silver cab on the left here. So we turn right into Exhibition Road and we pick up a family on the right-hand side. Presumably they've just come out of the science museum. Now, because they've got so many people in their group, it's actually a two cab job. So that silver cab is actually picking up behind me as we speak. They've held us down an exhibition road and they want to go to the Xenia Hotel, Cromwell Road. So it's not a very far run, but it's a little bit complicated in how you start running it. Whenever I do a two cab job, if I'm the back cab, I always follow the cab in front. If you get there before that other cab, it makes that other driver look like a mug. Or conversely, if I think, oh, I know a better route, and you get there and the other driver sat there smiling at you, it makes you look like a mug. So the best thing is to follow that driver, and then it just ensures the party stays together. It's a nicer experience for the passengers. But the driver behind me doesn't do that. He does a U-turn on Exhibition Road, goes up, presumably uses Prince Consort Road to come down Queensgate and get the right onto Cromwell Road that way. With my route, I carry on going forward, right into Furlow Place, right Cromwell Place, to get ourselves a left onto Cromwell Road. And as we trundle along Cromwell Road, we eventually do see that silver cab in front. So yeah, marginally better than me. I suppose a light sequence could have thrown it out. But as you can see here, we both pull up at the same time. So nothing is lost in those two different routes. Once we've dropped off, you have this kind of annoying conundrum whereby which cab dropped off first? Because you're now going down the road at the same rate as each other. You're both available for hire. You know, who gets the next job? So what I like to do in this instance is hang back a little bit. This works because the other driver goes through the lights. I then get stuck at the lights here of Queensgate and these people are crossing the road are trying to hail me down. And the job of the century is <laughs> Elveston Place. <laughs> I don't know whether they knew where Elveston Place was or they hailed me because it was beginning to rain. We dropped them off. I'm close to Exhibition Road and it worked for me before. So I'm gonna go try that area again. And yes, very neatly, I pick up an American couple. The gentleman does try and get in the door via the live side, but whenever customers do this, I always keep the doors locked. Come around this side because it's going to be much safer for you and it's much easier for the passing traffic as well. They get in and they want to go to the Cafe Royal, Air Street. This is a fairly easy run and it shouldn't be affected by the road closures in Central just yet. Get heading along Brompton Road, it gets a little bit busy up near Harrods. So, Trevor Square to cut me out onto Knightsbridge. 
Why? Because Brompton Road always slows up in that Harrods area leading up to Scotch Corner. And once I'm out onto Knightsbridge, I get the bus lane right by the barracks and you can just see how clear this is in comparison. It transpires that they're from New York and it's their first time in London. There's a bit of traffic on Piccadilly as we come out of the tunnel and this is very likely to be from the Palace Roads that have closed. All the Palace Roads shut at 2pm so anyone who's wanting to get you know, down to Westminster or out onto the Victorian Bankman or you know, through those routes will be forced naturally onto Piccadilly. Now there's two parts of Air Street. You have the bit that's north of Regent Street and there's a part that's south of it that sits between Piccadilly and Regent Street. Because of the forced left arrow, you can't actually go straight over into Cafe Royal. You actually technically have to come into Piccadilly Circus, up Regent Street, and then get a right. I let the customers know about this, but because they know this area fairly well now, they're more than happy to be dropped off at Piccadilly, which is surprisingly clear bearing in mind the circumstances. As Piccadilly is the magic circle where all the jobs just kind of emanate from, I get an on and off job. This couple who get the wrong restaurant and they wish to go to the alternative, which is in Covent Garden. So I get heading in that direction through Piccadilly Circus, down onto the Haymarket, and I'm going to get a left into Orange Street. I know that Trafalgar Square is going to be busy because the Palace Roads are shut, Whitehall was shut, as well as Northumberland Avenue. So Orange Street is going to be my safe bet. From here, we pull out onto Charing Cross Road and extending this diversion a little bit further, we get a left into Willem the Forp Street, go past the police station, left Chandos Place, right Bedford Street, and get on a left into the Strand. As their restaurant is on Wellington Street, I'd have to go right into the Aldwych, up Jewelry Lane, and back on myself because of the Covent Garden remodeling. So as we get relatively close, the Strand builds up in traffic, and I let them know that it's not too far from here. Because they're already running a bit late, they appreciate this gesture and they're happy as Larry. As I drop them off, I get another group come straight in. Annoyingly, they're quite slow to load up, so I get a little bit of grief from the bus behind. They want to go to the London Eye. Now, thankfully, I've already checked out my closures and areas. I know that I'm not going to be able to get them directly to the London Eye, and I know that I definitely can't get it from Westminster because Whitehall's shut, Westminster Bridge is shut. I was about to pull off. The lady in the back says, can you restart the meter? I said, why? She goes, well, there's £3.80 on it. I said, well, it, it starts at £3.80. So my only options are go over Waterloo Bridge, around Tennyson Way roundabout, go along York Road and set them as close as possible to Chichley Street. I head down York Road and as the traffic builds up, I'm quite lucky to get this job going over to Hoxton Street, you know, Shoreditch kind of area. So I see this run straight away, York Road, go around Tennyson Way roundabout, forward Stamford Street, go ourselves into Blackfriars Road to set us up neatly for Blackfriars Bridge, New Bridge Street, Farringdon Road, we'll get a right, come into the meat market, West Smithfield, East Poultry Avenue, Charterhouse Street, and work our way over to Old Street that way. But I'm immediately rattled because it's raining and I can hear the flip seat come down, meaning that she's put her feet up on the seats, which kind of annoys me because if people got like wet feet, that's going to get on the seats. That's going to be annoying for the next passengers that get in. It can stain the seats. All things I don't really want to have to think about when I just want to get her to her destination. And added to this, the lady then starts to mutter away to herself. I'm thinking, oh no, like have I, have I picked up someone I shouldn't have picked up? So I'm eager to get this job done as soon as possible. But disaster strikes in that Blackfriars Bridge is closed. This isn't actually a closure related to New Year's. This was just a general construction works closure. So that's just added to the journey. Had I known this, I would have gone back over Waterloo Bridge and that would have been our most optimum route. But as you can see, the traffic in the Stamford Street area is not ideal. I don't want to be going back in that Waterloo direction. So I progress along and go over to the next best alternative, which is London Bridge. Southwark Bridge is no good because that leads you down to the embankment and the Victorian embankment was shut there. So I know you go over Suffolk Bridge, you're then forced right, which is going to bring you out by the Tower of London. As we're lining up for London Bridge, the lady asks, well, what's going on? You know, why, why are you taking me this way? I said, oh, because they've closed, you know, various bridges because of, you know, the celebrations. And she says, what celebrations? And I'm like, New Year's Eve, isn't it? And she's like, oh yeah, I forgot. 
all these red flags, you know, she's muttering to herself, she ran out into the road, she didn't know it was New Year's Eve. I'm thinking, she's not gonna pay. When we get to Moorgate, she asks, is this the best route? Believe me, I wanna get off this job and get paid as soon as possible. What am I gonna do if she doesn't pay? Do I let her off the fair? Do I take it to the police station? Whatever, these are all the things that are running through your mind as you're doing the route and you just can't get through it fast enough. Once we get ourselves out onto City Road, we do a right onto Provost Street and forward Vestry Street. And from here, she actually starts to let me know where the you know, direction is where we should be going. Kind of fills me with a little bit more confidence because at least she's not completely mental that she doesn't know where she's going. And as we pull up, I can hear her pulling out some cash and she even asks, can I have a receipt, please? Honestly, like I just feel so relieved at this point. I'm like, yes, yes. Not wet, good. Tonight, is there some sort of party going on? I said, well, yeah, it's New Year's Eve. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> you think, right, I'm in the situation now. How can I best deal with it? And then she opens a can of drink and I'm thinking, oh God, that's another thing that could ruin your night because if that can of drink, it doesn't matter whether it's Coca-Cola, alcohol, water, anything spills on those back seats. I've got upholstered seats in the back. That's my night over. I, I can't drive them and no one's going to sit on wet seats. You can't go to work with wet seats. She clearly wasn't going to do a runner, but the, she's sort of saying weird stuff on the way there. And you're like, does she have any money, right? But luckily, dropped her off. Bosh, she's got money. In moments like that, you're like, I got paid. Like, yes. So five to six. Let's get going. I have a quick sniff in the city and as expected, it's relatively dead. But I'm lucky that as I go past St. Paul's Cathedral, I have this group here. There's no one on the rank at St. Paul's, so the job's mine. And they wanna go to Big Ben. Now knowing what I know now, it's gonna be a bit of a difficult job. I of course can't use Blackfriars Bridge as that's shut. And I know that Westminster Bridge is shut. So one of the thoughts in my mind is possibly going over Waterloo Bridge and then coming at Big Ben from the other side of Westminster Bridge because then you're gonna be much closer because you can't get to Big Ben because Whitehall shut. For these passengers, English isn't their first language. So if I try and explain to them, oh, I'm gonna go over Waterloo Bridge to come south to get Big Ben from the east because you can't get to Big Ben via Whitehall, they're gonna be like, what the hell? So in these moments, I'm really alone and I have to think about what is gonna be best for the passengers. I'm thinking if I get them to King Charles I Island, I know I won't be able to get any further than that, but they'll be able to see Big Ben from the top of Whitehall and I can say, look, this is as close as I can get. From here, we forward into the Old Witch, but we can't get down onto the Victorian Bankman. That would be an ideal option in normal times. You would come out um, on Arundel Street, around Temple Place, and bash it along Victoria Embankment and Big Ben very neatly presents itself. Any access down to Victoria Embankment and the Victoria Embankment itself has been shut since 2 p.m. So that option is entirely gone. So I just go straight over the old witch, out onto the Strand. The bus lane of the Strand works perfectly. A little bit of congestion by Charing Cross Station through into King Charles I Island and I attempt to drop them neatly here. Once we get nearby, I said, look, have you got tickets to get in? Because you need to get tickets to get beyond this area. They said, no, 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 we haven't. They just say, look, can you just take us to our hotel in Cheville Place, Knightsbridge? This is great because if they had said Cheville Place back at St. Paul's Cathedral where I picked them up from, this would have been the exact route I would have taken anyway. The slight deviation we've got to do today, we can't use the Palace Roads. So we go along Coxburg Street, Pall Mall, up at St. James's Street, left into Piccadilly, all the way out. I have to come at it from Brompton Road. What I would normally do is if I peel right at Knightsbridge and go past the High Park Barrack, you can come in from Trevor Place and Montpellier Square, but Montpellier Square has got construction works on it. I'm busting to use the gents, so I park up on the rest rank and I head over to the Golden Arches on Brompton Road. I head back in the Harrods direction and there's not a single cab on the Harrods rank and this lady comes running across the crossing to try and hail me down. I let her know that I can't pick her up on the crossing, I have to move a little bit further up Brompton Road to safely allow her into the cab and she and her friend want to go out to the XL Exhibition Centre. They're staying at the Sunborn Yacht Hotel I didn't even know this even existed, but effectively it's a hotel on a yacht docked 
you know, around near the XL Centre. Thankfully, at this time, I'm able to use the West End to get me out east. I can't get onto the Victoria Embankment, I can't use the Palace Roads like I normally would, but had this job been after 8 o'clock, bloody hell, that would have been a diversion of the century. So I'm thankful they've decided to get a cab now. From here, we go through Piccadilly, all the way along Piccadilly because it was quite clear earlier, through the circus, Haymarket. We're going to use Orange Street again because of Trafalgar Square being a bit busy. Cut ourselves out onto the Strand. From the Strand, we have to go all the way over the Aldwych, through Fleet Street, and this is where it sort of quietens off a bit. Fleet Street, Ludgate Circus, Ludgate Hill, St Paul's Churchyard, forward into Cannon Street, all nice and quiet and easy in the city through Swire Junction, forward into East Cheap, forward Great Tower Street, and we pull ourselves out onto Bywood Street for Tower Hill. This is where the route gets that little bit easier. East Smithfield, the highway, Limehouse Link, Aspen Way, Peel Left, around the roundabout, over the Lower Lee Crossing, over that roundabout, leave it by Western Gateway, and bosh, we can set them there. Definitely beats walking, eh? As I'm heading through the Limehouse Link Tunnel, I have an app job pop up, saying it's going from the Marlin Apartments on Commercial Road to Minories, just within the city, kind of near Tower Gateway Station. I'm thinking, touch, that will get me straight back in. So I accept it, it's only a three minute drive from the Limehouse Link Tunnel to the apartments. I get there, and there's no sign of the passengers. So I call the hotel. Oh, hi there, yeah, just a taxi driver. I'm just waiting outside for the passenger if they're available. And they let me know that the passengers are already gone. This frequently happens. It's one of the most annoying things about getting a job from a hotel is that the hotel just wants a car to come along and take their passengers. They don't really care if it was you, if a taxi driver was coming along with a light on. Super annoying. Some of the bigger hotels are better for this, but these little hotels, they know it can be quite difficult to get a cab out in these further areas. They'll just put the passengers in whichever vehicle comes first. So annoyingly, I have to trundle all the way back to Aldgate entirely empty. But I pick up this couple, they wanna to go to Broadway Market. This job is the first where I get the four pound extras on the meter. From here, we just have to turn around, Whitechapel High Street, Whitechapel Road, on the left, we've got the Blind Beggar Pub. This pub is infamous because it's where the notorious East End gangster, Ronnie Cray, shot George Cornell of the rival Richardson gang. We do a left on a Cambridge Heath Road. From here, we do a left into Andrews Road, which just follows along the north side of the canal, right in the Broadway market, and bosh, we drop them there. We are in four pound extras land. Most meters should automatically add it because these meters have the time and date in them because it knows it's rate two because it's a weekend, but it should know that today is um, after eight o'clock is when extras come on. So no, I have to add those in. Bosh, like that. So if anyone gets a bit funny about it, it even says it on the TFL rate card and that's what my meter provider has said to do. Kind of annoying those few runs I've had. So I've gone all the way out to XL, not had anything back. So I'm in Broadway Market. I mean, there's nothing going on around here. The good news is that at least I'm not dealing with all the traffic and the closures in Central. So I'll go back in. I'll maybe see what the app jobs are saying because I can use them to my advantage in this case, perhaps. Let's go. Maybe I should stay in the east of London because what's the point in going back in the West End where there's going to be a load of closures? But anyway, let's see how we do. As I'm doing a relatively longer shift today, it's probably best that I have a considerable break. I head along Hackney Road, over into Old Street, and even the whole Shoreditch area looks remarkably quiet considering the fact it's New Year's Eve at about eight o'clock. I stop and I go to the best kebab on Old Street. Loads of cabbies go here, it's relatively quiet tonight, and it's been a while since I've been in here. Finishing dinner, I hop back in the cab feeling refreshed. I go along Old Street, forward into Clerkenwell Road, and disaster strikes in the form of the closures. The closures are pretty spanning. They're right here on the junction of Grayson Road and Fearbolds Road. 
Maybe they're just doing it to stop the flow of traffic or potential threats getting into the area. All forced up Grayson Road and even the little side streets to try and cut through Bloomsbury are all closed as well. This is pretty serious. And I'm thinking, well, maybe I could try King's Cross. You know, there's gonna be people out that far who maybe wanna get into London or maybe get home because they might have traveled back from another part of the country. I eventually make my way around to King's Cross station and it doesn't look good. 20 past nine on New Year's Eve and there's not a soul in sight. And King's Cross is ranked out. Let's try St Pancras. I go round, come out onto Midland Road, and it's looking good. There's not many cabs on the rank at all. In fact, I'm just there for a few minutes and I'm soon straight on point of the rank. Awesome. But sadly, the minutes pass. So much so that it's nearly 10 o'clock. I'm on that rank for 30 minutes on point and not a single soul comes out. But I just have this vision that I'm gonna be stuck on that rank celebrating New Year's the St Pancras rank. So I just made the decision just to leave it empty. Head out to the Euston Road, just wanted to maybe get back into that central zone to try and pick someone up. But more closures mean I can't get there. I'm really regretting my decisions now. It's 10 o'clock, almost two hours ago since I had my last job. I know I've eaten in the middle, but two hours on New Year's, 10 o'clock, and I'm struggling to find a job. The next entrance to get me anywhere near the West End, Gower Street is also shut. First opportunity, Great Portland Street. And of course, all the other traffic is coming down Great Portland Street as well. I'm eager just to get away from this as much as possible. Let's go to Marylebone. A little bit more residential there. There might be someone hanging around the pubs there. That could work for me. Nah, <laughs> just, it gets worse and worse. Down North Audley Street. There's plenty of people milling up and down Oxford Street and I can see cabs that have got jobs on. I just can't get one. I'm thinking, I'm going to head to Mayfair. You're going to get someone in Mayfair, surely. All these opulent places, restaurants, clubs. There's going to be someone finished up at a restaurant who just wants to go home and celebrate New Year's at home. Eventually, I'm thinking, I don't want to sit in Berkeley Square, so I exit onto Bruton Street. And I managed to get a job outside Hackersand. But is it the luck I need? Or is it just going to cause me another headache? They want to get to the Londoner Hotel, followed by the Box Club. Once we start moving, I'm thinking that the absolute closest I'm going to be able to get them is either Regent Street or Piccadilly Circus. There's a hell of a lot of traffic on Conduit Street, so I exit off down to Savile Row. Burlington Street is shut, and then of course I'm into Burlington Gardens. So I'm thinking, no bother, if I come along Old Bond Street, I can get onto Piccadilly that way. Old Bond Street, you can see you can't exit out of there. Then of course you're forced over into Albemarle Street. I know that from this point, it's just going to force me back to Barclay Square. I let the passengers know. And literally, I can see now, you see all the traffic up there, look. If I go up there, we're just going to sit in it again. It's going to take us in completely the wrong direction. So I let them out on this junction bit here. I haven't really got them anywhere. I've probably been more of a hindrance to them. Go go down to the end of the street here, look, and just turn left, and that will take you straight into Soho sort of area. I mean, working New Year's, great. I have someone immediately want to jump in. And of course, I'm very quick to ask them where they're going so I can save the embarrassment again. Fortunately enough, they want to go to Notting Hill. Touch, get me out of the West End as quick as possible. We work our way out into Berkeley Square, but as you can see, the whole Berkeley Square area is completely ramo. So I'm thinking if I go Fitzmaurice Place, Curzon Street, my aim is just to get ourselves out into Park Lane. I know there's a bus lane on Park Lane, that's gonna get us out to safety, to the Bayswater Road and out to Notting Hill. We go around Marble Arch, get ourselves out on the Bayswater Road, through Lancaster Gate, Bayswater Road, and it's beautiful. Just nice and easy, rolling our way up to Notting Hill Gate, and they wanna be dropped off at Campton Hill Gardens. Super easy. I must admit, at this point, I'm thinking about going home. It's around about 11 o'clock, which is generally later than what I'd work anyway. And I haven't been that stressed in the cab for a very long time. I don't know why I'm whispering, it's bloody New Year's. I don't know if just to cut my losses really, just like, can't get anywhere. I'm gonna get inside the cab so I can shout a bit more. Can't get anywhere. Really, really bloody annoying. Like, I don't remember there being this much closure as last time. It's insane, like, you know what I mean? Like, I was up in, over here up in like Euston sort of direction. You couldn't get in, up away one place. You couldn't get in Gower Street. 
And by that time, you're then committed for the underpass. So everyone's coming down Great Portland Street because that's the only available left. Like, it's insane. I just don't get why it's such a massive area. Yeah, maybe I should have just taken this here. This is a warning sign not to come in, really. It's a four pound extras, but they're not really going that far. I've done three jobs with the four pound on. And I let the liver puddlings off a few quid because I was embarrassed that I got them nowhere. So that four pound, I've only I've only done really two jobs that have benefited from it. You know, what, I'm gonna go to Knightsbridge, see what I get, and then just just call it a night. Why am I bothering with it? Why? So I get myself out in the Kensington Church Street. Then one of my apps goes off. It's from Warwick Road going right over to King's Cross. I'm usually really reluctant to accept app jobs when I'm in town because. I know there's loads of people on the street desperate for a cab, but as we've seen, I can't get anywhere. So to save the stress, I'm happy to take a bit of a knock on the earnings in form of commission through a taxi app and just stay well out of the center zone. Warwick Road to King's Cross, straight over the top, big easy roads that I've driven on that I know are clear. No brainer really, so I'll take it. This one's going to the big chill on Pentonville Road. Now, the sat-nav is saying that I can just buzz it all the way up Holland Road, West Cross Route, and up onto the Westway and in that way. The issue is it adds an extra mile, but it only cuts about a minute off the total time. If I get to the West Cross Route and there's an accident there or something happens, I'm proper screwed. So, I go back in a little bit, cruise along Kensington High Street, pull us up Campton Hill Road, cut us out onto Kensington Church Street. From here, you can actually see the strobe lights up in the sky from all the New Year's celebrations that will be taking place at the London Eye. Along the Bayswater Road, Stanhope Terrace, Sussex Place, right Sussex Gardens, forward Old Marlebone Road, right Marlebone Road, and just cruise our way to freedom. It's kind of an annoying way of working, but it's guaranteed jobs that I know is going in the correct direction. It saves the headache of, you know, getting a job that I can't fulfill. Eventually getting them there, I pull into King's Cross Road because it's a bit safer and easier on traffic if I drop them here rather than on Pennantville Road. I start heading in the direction of the city because I know that the roads are fairly easy and open there, but still keep an eye on the apps as that's my new tactic of working for this evening. And lucky enough, I see one go off on Amwell Street, right by Johnny Schnitzel, and it's going to Cornwall Gardens. You'd think as it's 10 to 12 that no one would want to be moving around London, that everyone would be set inside of a party, inside of an establishment, waiting for the New Year's countdown. Super simple, we buzz it all the way up, Claremont Square, left into Pentonville Road, left Penton Rise, work ourselves around the gyratory, Swinton Street, right Gray's Inn Road, past the King's Cross Lighthouse and out onto the Euston Road. Euston Road, Euston Underpass, back out onto Euston Road, Marlebone Road. And it's at this point here on Marlebone Road is where I'm spending my New Year's. It's 12 midnight, I turn the radio up a little bit because they're having a little bit of a celebration in the back. The kids are going mental because it's 2023. What a great way to start the new year off. Go down Old Marlebone Road, forward into Sussex Gardens, and I cut down Sussex Place, right Stanhope Terrace, left into Brook Street because we are going to be going through the park. When I was planning the evening, I was thinking if I don't get anyone in around midnight, where is the best place I can sit and watch the fireworks? It's gonna be somewhere that's got a view of the London Eye, but ideally not in the closures. Probably the best place for that is on the Serpentine Bridge. As you can see, there's quite a lot of people parked up here on the Serpentine Bridge. There's even a few idiots who are letting off fireworks themselves. You can't see it in this shot, but myself and the passengers look left out towards the London Eye and you can see all the fireworks taking place there. We get them out the park, just do a right onto Kensington Road, left Palace Gate, four Gloucester Road, right Cornwall Gardens, set down on left. I just get back out onto the big road of Cromwell Road. I'm thinking one more job in the right direction and I'm very happy to call it a night. Remarkably quieter around the Harrods area, but I pick up these ladies who wish to go to the Marriott Marble Arch. 
Annoyingly, the Marriott Marble Arch isn't actually by Marble Arch. The Marriott Marble Arch might as well be called Marriott Edgware Road. Super lucky with this job because it means I haven't got to go back to anywhere near the closures. I can just stick it on the big roads. Little bit busy coming out onto Knights Bridge, but eventually around Hyde Park Corner, up into Park Lane, Marble Arch, little bit busy joining onto Edgware Road, but we get through it, turn right onto George Street, left Fawcett Street, come into the forecourt, set down, and we are done. New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, it's just another day of the year. I got paid by everyone, there's no drunks, no pukers, I had some great customers. It's 20 to 1, I'm going to go home. If you've enjoyed this video, then I highly recommend joining my Sunday summary email. I give an overview of what I've been up to this week in London, as well as some other personal discoveries and things that I'm reading. I'd highly recommend checking it out. You can subscribe to that over here. See you all again soon. Bye-bye.